Welcome everyone to the DLAT season 3 Q&A. I almost forgot what Yay. season it was. Just hands. <laughs> okay, Just we're going to introduce <laughs> We're going to introduce everyone who's here, starting with my bestest friend in the whole wide world forever, Sasha. Aww. I kind of thought you were going to end that with like <laughs> someone not even here. Um, no, yeah, I, like, I was <laughs> considering it. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm Sam, um, or Sasha, or lots of other names you can call me. I play Essa slash Sasha on the podcast that you are listening to the Q&A of, which I hope you know what it's called, but if you don't, it's called The Domestic Life of I don't. Todd. <laughs> Thank you. I'll go look it up wow. on Spotify, or Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, let's advertise Shameless. the podcast to the people listening to it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, guys, you should listen to The Domestic Life of Anthony Todd, <laughs> starring Sasha. And share The Domestic Life of Anthony Todd with your friends. Oh, my God. Share it with your friends, <laughs> and maybe one day God will listen to us. Wait. <laughs> that's that's the wrong podcast. Are we introducing ourselves? We are. The next up is River. Hello. I'm, um, I'm the script editor, and I play a more um, crumbling at uh, the second, but hoping I can stay together enough just to <laughs> just for this Q and A that you're listening to. <laughs> Riv is gonna gonna crumble and dissolve a little bit during <laughs> during the recording of this. Only a little. Uh, and last, but certainly not the least, we have the librarian and her companion. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, hi. <laughs> I'm CVVM, I play Liv and Kalinox in Duet. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> and for context, your nickname on Discord is. Yeah, the my nickname in the server is companion. the librarian and her companion. It's very cute. I love it. <laughs> I also, uh, my name on Discord is Mr. Urban Fantasy Big Bucks, and I think that's very important to know. <laughs> I might just cut that out, but. <laughs> yeah. For it's now, there if we want to cut it out. out. It's so exactly. crucial. <laughs> it's essential oh for the Dila experience. I think that's the only way we're gonna. You have. That's how you have to be credited in this episode, and that's the only oh way we're gonna address you. No. Mr. Urban <laughs> Fantasy Big Bucks. Mr. Big Bucks. So, <laughs> I think I need to be Small Bucks actually, because <laughs> we don't make money off of Dila. <laughs> yeah. We do this for free. Too sure. <laughs> yeah. So Small Bucks, very Small Bucks. <laughs> Is that a question? Um, <laughs> Mr. Urban Fantasy Is that a no question? Bucks. <laughs> How many bucks are you? How many bucks oh could an urban fantasy buck? Uh, I'm actually does, not bucks. Gender <laughs> change in the middle of sentence. <laughs> what yeah, are you, terrible. French? Guys, sorry. Good job. <laughs> what are you, French? This is such a good Q&A, guys. <laughs> this is great. Yeah, this is professional Q&A-ing podcasting. We're doing so well. <laughs> Yeah. We are. Okay, questions, <laughs> questions, questions. Questions. That's questions. what we're here for. Okay, hey everyone. We Hi. have a question <gasps> for everyone. This is a fun one. Um it's from question mark because unfortunately I don't know why it didn't name. So hi, whoever asked this, I love you. Um <laughs> Do any of the characters have canon heights? If yes, who? Plus what heights? If no, do you have any head canons about them? Um, this is for everyone. I'm gonna start by saying I'm not gonna answer this question. No. Because word of God is stupid, and like you should head canon whatever you want. No, you gotta you Aww. gotta release the art of um like Quill <coughs> and Liv and London. Oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm eventually well, gonna see, draw that more. Has that does have canon heights on it. <laughs> Give <laughs> us the, the canon heights. The I'm not telling you. Oh my god. <laughs> See, okay. okay. So the, que the, the answer to the question is yes, there are canon heights, but I'm not telling you. Oh my god. <laughs> Why? <laughs> but you're terrible. To you, because. Because. I know I am. I love you, but the you're terrible. The season three finale was written by me. Um, <laughs> but for you guys, what, what do you head canon your character's heights as? I think Liv is really tall i think she's well really i don't know if people would say i think she's like 5'10 which i consider really tall because i'm short <gasps> oh, five ten ten. oh my god i, love that. I, love that I so think much. she's tall 
Oh, I love it. Yes. Kalinox, I think, I'm I don't know if it's mentioned in podcasts, but I think Kalinox is, like, really short. Really short. Yeah. Oh, Kalinox yeah. actually does have a cannon height, and it's about, it's between three and four feet. Like, yeah. Kalinox yeah. is oh very Oh my gosh. Short. Kalinox is small. Like, tiny. Tiny baby. I, I, I always forget that, and then I'm listening to the podcast, and it just pops in my mind, and I'm like, oh wait, isn't Kalinox really fucking short? Yes. Super short. <laughs> very intimidating. Very short. <laughs> Just imagine yeah. them like walking through like, like the like it's not catacombs, but you know what I mean. Um, yeah, the yeah. like underground area and the fucking tunnels. Kalinox is like three and a half feet tall and Liv is like five <laughs> foot ten. Oh my god! <laughs> they just keep like, vo- <laughs> like London, oscillating like, back and forth between each other. down at it and being like, "Huh, you're oh you're a lot shorter than I imagined." Well, <laughs> well the thing is, the thing is, um, this wasn't a question, but. The thing is, Liv and Kalinox are the same being. Kalinox made Liv tall to live out its dreams <laughs> of being tall. <laughs> oh, God. And I that's love that. canon. Well, what you can picture is essentially Liv and Kalinox, like, walking through the caverns, but, like, oscillating between very tall and very short. Oh, my God. Because, yeah. <laughs> like, they're the same, like, Oh, my God. Form. Oh, my God. Yeah. Who wants to go next? I feel like, okay... I feel like Sasha's, like, normal height, like, like, a really average height, like, 5'5 five, five or something, but, like, all of the people there around are taller, and so they're, like, <laughs> really annoyed by, like, tall people, because people call so, them so short, you... and they're not. Oh, yeah. Who do you, who do you headcanon as tall, then? Like, I don't, I don't know, like, I feel like, I feel like Azyander is pretty tall. Azyander has tall energy to me. Oh, for sure, for sure. Azander has tall energy. Oh, yeah. I imagine him as, like, the butler from Ace Attorney. From Ace Attorney? Like, Wait. Super... Which one? I guess it's not, <laughs> he's not a butler, but, like, he's, the, like, the one that looks like a butler. The bellhop. Yeah. I love him. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I... God, is Zyander looking like the bellhop from Ace Attorney? That That's my headcanon oh my of him. God. That's an interesting concept. I love that. <laughs> No, I love that. That's wonderful. I thought you were going to say the butler from Black Butler, and I was like, he is very tall. No, and I feel like, 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 Abby, I think, is, like, it's, it's either, I think Abby's either a little bit taller or a little bit shorter than Essa, and Ooh. one way or the other, like, the taller one lords it over the shorter one all of yeah. the time. Yeah. It's something that they'll never live down. Yeah, literally. Oh. And it's, and it's not even that it's big like of a difference. It's like down. an inch or two. <laughs> At most. I think that Amor is probably, like, extremely tall. Like, he's taller. Like, the only person he isn't taller than is Eris. Mm. And that, or, like, he's extremely, like... <gasps> fucking Eris. I, I, I think I thought about, like, him being extremely short, but I think that he... Amor has <laughs> tall energy. Um, yeah, he has tall energy. Like, he's, like, very... Like, he knows that he's extremely tall, and he rubs in everyone's faces... Um, like, mm-hmm, he's especially mm-hmm, taller mm-hmm. than Rosk, and, he like, like, I feel like that he dangles that over her head He seems like the time. kind of person oh who, like, God. takes people's things and holds them above their yeah. head. <laughs> well, okay, I want to say, okay, you said Eris, and it reminded me, Eris actually does have a cannon height. But you're not gonna tell <gasps> us, as is the common thread. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> I am, I am actually gonna say, well... I will say it because I am going to make it canon in a work, (gasps) probably the next one that's going to be released, teaser. Um, Eris is five foot three. Oh my gosh. I was imagining that Amor would be like six foot three. That is so funny. (laughs) Oh my god. Yes, do it. Yeah. Eris is five foot three. I think he grows a little bit given that he's he's younger um he probably is about five five now but he's, so he's not literally gonna just like a much. tiny little kid having a tantrum yeah he is all the time he keeps winning and i don't <laughs> like it Ugh, quill's family keeps defeating me over and over again i wonder whose fault is that <laughs> it's mine it's not bad um, what if what if rosk and amora are both really tall and they play monkey in the middle <gasps> with 
fucking Eris' shit all oh the time. He's like, guys, God. stop it. And they're like, <laughs> yeah, what? It's funny. Eris. <laughs> I love, I love the idea. Oh my gosh. See, that that's fantastic. a really funny thing too, is because Eris is like thousands of rotations old. Like so much older than them. Uh-huh. That's incredible. <laughs> I love that. And he's like, guys, I'm your boss. And they're like, yeah, yeah so get so. your stuff back. <laughs> Be more tall. Yeah. Oh my God. Be well, taller. there's a reason for him Just being slow. short, but uh, that's going to be revealed later. <laughs> Coming soon. Oh my God. But yeah, no. Uh, teaser, teaser for post DLAT project, the next project in the yes. Iden universe. Whoop, whoop. Took 20 minutes, but um, we got the first question done. <laughs> We did! In 20 <laughs> minutes. Okay, next question. This is a fun one. Uh, does anyone have songs that you associate with your characters? Oh. Um, I I would probably say for oh more. Yes, probably, I do, I do. Probably, um, like, I need to find Willpower it and Hard to Be the Bard. <laughs> oh, my God, no, oh my God, Oh my God, yes! Oh yes. my god. Just radiates I literally know both, that's um, exactly Christian what Quirrell I was going to say. <gasps> energy and mm-hmm. sh- like something mm-hmm. rotten sp- Shakespeare energy. No, the funny thing is, is that Amor is absolutely based on Shakespeare. <gasps> oh my gosh! Oh my god. <laughs> and I'm so glad. I am so glad. Because if you, if you didn't say it, I didn't think you would, but you did. <laughs> if you didn't say it, I was going to. I like. I totally I understand that I sassy have... bisexual is now like, is bisexual. It's so good. Mm. I yeah. No, I'm a script editor. I have, I have two <gasps> songs that remind Ooh, me of Live. Live. Mm-hmm. Um, one is Ready Now by yes. Dodie. Uh, it's such a cute song. And the other one is Stories by Lily Farfaro, which I don't. I feel like you guys don't know since you don't listen to Critical Role, but it's like. It's it's it starts with I breathe stories I breathe mm-hmm. them in and out so like oh my god it's got no, live all like, over oh, it it's got that. live all See, over it it's so I've got cute. to be doing a good thing because I was gonna say live songs are just Dodie songs so I've I've got to be describing these characters <laughs> well for you guys to know that this is wonderful I don't okay I no look I don't have like I'm not somebody who does songs <laughs> like that but honestly like like associates characters with songs like that but. If I had to pick, I have this playlist on my Spotify that's, like, 90 songs, and it's actually, I made it for, like, D&D, but it's just a bunch of, like, vaguely esoteric, like, folky that's songs. So cool. It's got lots of Cosmo Sheldrake and Crane Wives and, like, mm. uh, songs from yeah. Cartoon yeah. Saloon movies, yeah, and I no. feel like yeah, just this whole, it's got, like, you know, like, Dear Fellow Traveler <gasps> and... Um, I feel like if, yeah, just, just most of these songs on this playlist. Oh, yes. Absolutely. I am so here for that. I yeah. Cosmo Sheldrake mm-hmm. is very SO vibes. Like just the the kind of like cryptic like cryptid yeah. forest cryptid Literally. witchy vibes. I love no, exactly. them. They're very good. Yes. I'm trying They fit SO so they well. They do. I love it. I'm trying to find my uh my quill playlist, but I cannot oh. find it. Yeah, I was about to yeah. ask. What are some um, quill songs? So I do remember one song that's on Quill's playlist. I remember two. Um, is <laughs> um, is hand me my shovel? I'm going in. Uh, Will Wood. <gasps> oh, oh my god! I love that one. That was the first one I added to the Quill playlist. No, you're so right. <laughs> I think you were there when I made the Quill playlist. I think we were sitting in a hotel room. Uh, was I? For yeah, for when? Uh, our uncle's wedding. Oh, were, was yeah. that then? Mm-hmm. All I remember yeah. from that is listening to the blooper reel and. <laughs> being super excited about it yes that was so much fun but yeah no you were there when i made when i made the og quill playlist um god sammy has been here for like all of the steps for dila it's wonderful yeah um the the other song that i have for quill is uh i need to know from jekyll and hyde i don't know if you guys know that one it's a good song i need to get out of my songs (laughs) No Jekyll songs. and Hyde is a great show, no but songs. I need to know Jekyll and Hyde has the same energy as, like, Hand Me My Shovel, but less chaotic. It's more, mm-hmm. like, astute. So, mm-hmm. like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and for Abby, like, genuinely just classical Baroque. Like, just yeah. any classical Baroque oh music. God. I love Baroque I know. Music. I love Baroque I have your playlist so saying. You know this about yeah. me. <laughs> I listen to it. My Baroque music. You don't need music. to fix it, so it ain't Baroque. <laughs> <laughs> 
that I hey. broke it. Oh my fix god. It. I was looking through my songs to try and find things that I think fit mm-hmm. Kalanox, and honestly, I don't think they're like, this is like music Kalanox would listen to, but it like fits its vibe, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, Sinners by Barnes Courtney and Marked Man by Micah Pauly and Burn the Witch <gasps> by Sean James. Ooh, okay, yeah. I like, like those vibes. I don't think that's the kind of music that Kalanox would uh-huh. listen to, but I feel like that fits Kalanox, you no, know? No, I like those vibes. Those are great. Now that I think about it, Amore probably, like, if given the opportunity, probably did do theater for, like, community theater or whatever, <laughs> oh but stopped God. doing oh, it because you wouldn't get lead roles I'm and leaving. got, like, I'm and done. just, like, basically rage <gasps> quit. Yes! Oh, I love this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh my yeah. God. <laughs> if Iden follows Earth it. timeline, like absolutely, <clears throat> I'm I'm here so for it. Iden Iden does actually follow like Earth's timeline pretty well up until the industrial period because then they switch to mm-hmm. solar power and it's very cool. But yeah. like, yeah, mm. Iden Iden pretty much just stays with Earth mostly because I can't bother to change too much in the past because then I have to change the future a lot. Isn't that yeah? But, like, yeah, I think, um, since these are all my characters, I'm gonna speed run, but, um, I think Kalanox, uh, like, White Ball and, like, uh, Dream Sweet in C Major, mm-hmm. like, those sort of songs. Oh my god. <coughs> those are yeah. kind of Kalanox uh-huh. vibes. Um, oh my god, they are. Just yes. Void I, songs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think it's Zyander. <laughs> For some reason, the only thing I can think of is Lemon Demon. <laughs> oh my god and i don't no. know why but it fits somehow like i feel like a Zyander is one of those people who like you think would listen to classical baroque and then listens to lemon demon i need, I need a scene where like, his doesn't demon. fit like his yeah, i need a scene where like. he's like dusting something or something and just singing like mask of my own face under his yes. breath i was like my trace he's singing two trucks oh my, oh my god, god. Zion is singing two trucks while dusting the hall. I just... <laughs> He's mopping the floor, yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh, that's incredible. Anthony just walking in, like, being like, two what's trucks, this? Holding hands. Yes. <laughs> I love that so much. I w- for Anthony, I was originally going to say, <laughs> oh my God. like... Anthony walks in. <laughs> Anthony walks in. Anthony walks in, and he's like, what's a truck? <laughs> read about them but he's like live where it's like is this fiction <laughs> oh my god yeah and uh-huh. so oh it's got to be the uh, the butterfly meme like is this oh my god <laughs> anthony yes. pointing at a truck is this fiction <laughs> is this real <laughs> he like thinks that's, that's incredible. like a, a oh my flower <clears throat> yes. anthony can you tell me what exactly is a truck god. <laughs> no but i can tell you how to make a tape recorder <laughs> God, I love <clears throat> Anthony. We'd um, love to see it. Ah, I was gonna speed run. I'm not speed running. Uh, Cal <laughs> listens to everything that Rot listens to. Like anything oh, that oh Rot God. would listen to. Will Wood, uh, Lemon Demon. Uh, what else does Rot listen to? Freaking um, Scorpion and the Frog and like Perfect Wife. Like oh honestly. My God. No. Yeah. yeah I'm what's sorry. the name of the band? Again? I have no like, idea. I cannot or... remember. I have one of the. Let me check. Uh, Amigo, yeah. and, Amigo the and the Devil. Because yes, I, I always like, got it mixed up with uh, the Amazing Devil before I knew anything about either yeah. of them. Yeah, Amazing Devil vibes goes to Essa as a treat. Um, what did I say for Martin? I've said this before. What kind of music Martin would listen to? I genuinely he comes don't off remember. as like a yacht rock kind of person for some reason. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> Martin, known yacht rock <clears throat> listener. Um, I also think that Martin would really like, like, just show tunes. Like, I think Ma- mm-hmm. Martin is a show tunes yeah, gay. Yeah. I love him. I can see that. Yeah. I can see that. Specifically, like, I feel like some newer ones, but, like, older ones. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like he'd really like, like, West Side Story oh and, God. like, Suzical no, and, like, Evita so and, like, that kind of Into stuff. Into the Woods. Yeah. Into the Woods, yeah. Sound of music. I feel like that's Martin vibes. Quill, oh Quill, um acts like they like uh, musical theater show tunes, like older ones, but actually is like, <laughs> you know, the newer ones, like Come From Away and like 
great comment and that sort of things like would absolutely cursed love quill dear of a handsome yeah. fan edition oh good <laughs> god no i feel like quill really likes the history plays like specifically oh, the history yeah. shows so like hamilton come from away Fucking uh, nerd. oh my god comet miss saigon <clears throat> i think miss saigon is past yeah, right I believe yeah. So, yeah um yeah stuff like that i feel like quill would really like that's also me projecting and you know what? I think Rosk and Abby have the same music taste. Um, yeah. And I think that Eris likes all kinds of music. Eris I genuinely likes think Bieber. pop pop. pop. Eris, like, no, please, <laughs> no, Christ. Justin Bieber does pop not Pandaris. exist in this universe. I'm making that decision right now. <laughs> Executive decision. Oh, oh Wipe no. Justin Bieber See, from the face of the planet. Oh God. <laughs> Listen, he never guys, existed guys, to begin with. Guys, I just had the best yeah. idea. So, Ross and Moore are playing Monkey in the Middle with Eris, and he gets upset, and he leaves and just starts blasting MCR. Oh my god! <laughs> no, see, I was gonna say, I, I'm so for that. I was gonna say Taylor Swift, because it's always breakup songs, and I feel like Eris oh just god. has, like, insane breakup song energy. Because oh he's like, God, so I'm breaking yeah. up with this planet, I'm breaking up with the gods, I'm breaking up with literally everyone. <laughs> He's the kind of person to, like, call himself a super fan of a band. Like, he calls himself a super fan of MCR, but only listens to, like, I'm Not Okay and Black Parade, yes. and that's it. Oh <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yes. No, I'm here for it. Yes. God. He's, like, a super fan, but if any song other than those two comes on, he's like, what the fuck I don't is know what this is. <laughs> yeah. Eris hates, uh, that. Danger Days. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I feel like... I feel like Eris genuinely just all sorts of music. Because Eris doesn't, like, hate the good things about the people living on the planet. He just hates all the bad things, and he's a very bad outweighs the good kind of person. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, him. Oh, him. Fun. Cool. Um, anyway. Anyway, questions. <laughs> uh, River, I'm going to do the one for us, too, because we have, we have one for us, too. What is the editing process for episodes? And it was just editing process, so I'm mm-hmm. going to talk about audio too. But I want to, like, start with, like, me giving you the episode. Like, what's your editing process? Um, I mean, essentially what I do is that I read through it once, and then I read it again, but out loud. And then I see what kind of works, as in, like, is this like kind of a mouthful of a sentence or how exactly would be the best way to um, illustrate what this sentence is trying to like convey and like what's the best way that this can be audibly sent across and um, then I read it one more time in my head and to make sure that everything just like looks okay both for if it looks okay then it's probably gonna sound okay and for people who are looking at the transcript and then I do final check of just making sure everything looks okay and then I go okay James are done (laughs) just hope for the best yeah (laughs) and it's very very helpful because I tend to like in real life, I ramble. Over writing, my rambles are just, like, yeah. they're very flowery. Like, so flowery. Like, you would think you were reading Picture of Dorian Gray or some shit. Like, so flowery. It's, it's yeah, too flowery. Um, you got better, though. I have. I have learned from your edits. Yeah. I pay attention. <laughs> Since, I think, like, I started season one, episode seven? Uh, I think it was episode five, actually. I specifically remember something about, like, spoons. Like, it's like Abby stirring her tea with a spoon. And I remember uh. listening to the podcast, and, like, I was on a bike ride or something. I was like, they cut my edit in. I remember specifically writing that edit. And <laughs> that was kind of, like, my hope for, like, maybe I do have, like, maybe this can't, can't be a thing that I can do, like, consistently. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <clears throat> Are you kidding? Yeah. Anyone who's listening who's a podcaster hire river Mm -hmm. seriously like get river on your team worth it thank you um yeah you're very good um and then then once you give it to me 
uh, I go through and I check some, I check most of them. I genuinely like will, will say, yeah, that sounds good most of the time. Some of the time, like, I think the intonation was weird. So like, yeah. I will exit, but I will change the intonation with like italics or something. Yeah. Um, so that it's more clear. Um, so that, I mean, even that helps. Um, yeah. And then after that, like, yeah, recording and stuff. Um, <coughs> editing is like, it's gone from me editing everybody's audio individually into like separate lines and leaving spaces to like, I've put like five unedited tracks on top of each other and just edited them all into an episode. And like, it's, hard and it takes so much time but like it takes less time than doing it like separately mm. so sometimes I'll do it separately like if there's a lot a lot of lines or like if it's like two characters like if I'm editing Liv and Kalinox like I'll edit characters separately or like if it's Quill and Essa or like Abby and Essa I'll edit them separately and put them together but like when I'm editing like big scenes I genuinely will just stack them and put them together um the only thing that I do separate usually is um just noise removal um otherwise yeah <laughs> fun editing we love to see it um okay so there are two questions for people who aren't here and me um I'm gonna open up both of these to you guys um, because I think it's applicable but we have one from Jem, love Jem uh, which is which character would be most likely to make a podcast um, <laughs> and <coughs> I I think besides Quill because Quill is actively making a podcast yeah so I was gonna say I think yeah. Quill <laughs> valid answer yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think Quill is like the only valid answer in terms of canon but like also like yeah, who do you guys? I can think see. I can see Abby making a podcast. It's a really bad podcast, <laughs> and no one listens to it. But she still <laughs> makes it. <Yeah. laughs> I think I think Liv totally would. Oh yeah, I no, feel like for sure. I feel like Liv yeah. would kind of just make one in the style of just like picking a topic and, and just like rambling like, about it for twenty minutes, clicking record on some device and just rambling about it for like. You know, ten or twenty minutes. Yes, I was yeah. yeah I was gonna mm -hmm. ask uh, additionally what type of podcast, and that's oh yeah. I think I think Abby's is like Abby's is just like talking about like just like like really like obscure esoteric shit, and it's like people would <laughs> listen to it, but the audio yeah. quality is so bad. <laughs> oh my god! And Abby cannot be bothered to fix it. <laughs> oh my god! Wait, that's so good. That's so good. That's, That's incredible. Oh I think the only God. person who listens to it would be Sasha. Like, I j yeah. yeah. And, like, they would make, like, like fake accounts that, like, gives, like, good, good ratings. Can you imagine Sasha listens to it and Abby is like, Abby is like, look, I have, I have, I got someone to listen to my podcast. And Asa's like, oh, yeah, totally. That's great. Yeah, yeah for sure. That's awesome. <laughs> Oh my god. Great job, Abby. Where where does where does Abby upload it though? Um like mm. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Where does Quill upload their podcast? Spotify. Because they or? don't use the internet in canon. Um I feel like She just made it. They would it. put it in the library. They would put and it in And they would have like oh. live like put in the put it on the speakers. Oh my, oh god. my god. That's why nobody's it's in the cute. library. It's really cute. <laughs> That's why nobody comes in. It's because Abby's podcast is always Because <laughs> Abby's terrible podcast is always playing. That's amazing. Um, oh my god. Guys, we figured it out. I feel that more probably wouldn't have a podcast, but I feel like that he would have a talk show. <gasps> but every time he interviews oh, someone, yeah. he like always ends up making it about him. Yeah. He'd make one of those talk shows where he's oh, always like... just trying to like start drama and shit. Mm -hmm. Oh, that yeah. puts me in physical Like, he would pain. probably, now that I think about it, he probably would have, like, a daily podcast that's just called, like, Spilling the, like, the Mythical Tea or whatever, <laughs> and it's just, like, him talking crap about other gods and stuff. Oh my oh gosh, my God, yeah. yes. <laughs> and, like, Rose complaining in the background is like, who are you talking to? It's like, no one. No one. He brings people Shut on up. the show just Go to, away. like, bully them. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, he's like, Darius, so talks. we invited you here today. Why are you so fucking short? And Eris is like, what the hell? Yeah. 
god, I love that so much. <laughs> it's so perfect. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, that's wonderful. I love this. I feel like Absolutely, if I Martin do. were to make a podcast, I feel like it would literally just be like a version of his like journalism. So like he would go out and record mm-hmm. stories and stuff. Like yeah. he would be yeah. like, "Hey, mm-hmm. interview," like an interview podcast, but like he out has and about. a quote unquote podcast, but it's just like audio versions yeah. of all his journalism. He does he does podcasts about all of his articles. Yeah. Yeah. Like he just he just records his interviews and releases them. Yeah. Like on Pretty audio much. and in paper (laughs) um i feel like that he would kind of have something like both that or like on the side or like maybe combined together he would have something that's kind of like the podcast but outside where like he like just like sits around outside on like a table and like whoever like comes by is like hey i'll give you a dollar to be on my podcast and like have have you like (laughs) oh my god and i'll like ask you questions and stuff and have a podcast with you and they're what like, the sure, okay. And they just make a podcast out of that. It's a fun... Yeah. Yeah. I, I just realized, like, do I have a currency? There is a currency in Morgrove, but it's coins. Coins. Because it's old. Because it's old currency. I mean, if you think about how old Morgrove is, when you... Yeah. Well, yeah. nobody knows I'll the actual... One gold coin Conversion factor. But, like, genuinely, like... I think I, I, think I do have American dollars in... <laughs> some of my other stories though i might change that but that's a lot that's a lot to change that's too much for my small little brain <laughs> control f and just go pop I off mean, I'll, I'll, I'll help even Aiden, Aiden is going to be as close to earth as possible because god there's another planet that has a completely separate language and i don't even want to talk oh. about it like oh my god uh, oh dear. I need to relearn that language, and I made it. Like, I used to speak this language, and I don't anymore. So, yeah, that's super fun. Um, yeah, cool. That was fun. Um, <laughs> this session is from Lindsay, my beloved. I love you so much. Um, it was originally for Eli and James, which is me. Hi. <laughs> um, what was your favorite episode or scene this season? And given that Eli was only in the second season two trailer. I don't <laughs> know. I also don't think I can get Eli on um, right now because they are probably at work or something. Um, but yeah, what about you guys? What was your favorite episode or scene this season? Or both? This season. What happened mm-hmm. this season? Martin <laughs> Wait. came back. Ciara collapsed the oh, cabin. Yeah, that was... Oh. Um, Liv found out that Kalanox existed. Oh, boy. Well, now I need to think. Damn it. <laughs> Honestly, like, maybe it's because, like, I read the scripts all the time or, like, Amor just doesn't really get a lot of stuff. I, I mean, besides episode 30, of course, but he doesn't really get a lot of stuff yeah. that isn't just, like, one-liners and stuff, which yeah. is not a bad thing, and I love him for that. But, um, it, I think probably episode 30 yeah. was probably like my it's my favorite to listen to like it's my favorite in concept but like i love the one-liners i mm-hmm. love i love his little one-liners thingies but it was definitely a big change but and it was fun doing the like big evil monologue and yeah. sounding very feminine yeah like <laughs> i remember during the read through of that just like Feeling emotions oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. at that scene. Like, <laughs> oh my god, so that was yeah. so good. I'm okay, I'm not caught up. <laughs> Me neither. Um, <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> Okay, listen. I'm not caught up. I'm hyper fixated on Critical Role right now, Which so it's all I'm listening to. Um, but I did really like that one scene. Okay, I'm trying to remember like the words from it, but that one scene where Liv is talking to Kalinox and she's like, they only have a visit the library to talk to you. Right? Yeah, that scene? yeah. The first time oh, I read through that scene, me. I cried. And then Kalanox says the exact amount of time. The first time I read yeah. through that, I literally cried. I really liked that yeah. scene. It had, it had so emotions I, in it. I think... <laughs> I don't remember who inspired that scene. Because I know somebody did, but I don't remember who. But I think somebody was having a bad day and was like, I wish people would like want to talk to me or something. And like... So I'm like, haha, scene. And I, like, poured my emotions into it or something. 
I don't remember who that it was. That sounds like though. something I would something. Say. I mean, maybe <laughs> it might have been. I don't know. I can't remember. That would be kind of funny, actually. I do base a lot of live scenes off of you, so... What? <laughs> what? <laughs> like, as soon as you started playing live, I'm like, okay, cool, this is good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I... Oh. Now it's my... Is it my turn? Sammy, go. You haven't gone. Go. <laughs> oh. I, well, okay. I just, just from the recording side, like the voice acting side, I am always in the market for fake crying. Yeah. I don't even know how good I am You're at it. You're very like, I'm good at so it. I'm so a fan it's, of fake I think crying I'm all at the it, time. But it's also it's my really fun. Favorite. No, genuinely, like between you and Cecil, like I tears. <laughs> but just episode thirty was so good. Just in general. It, to be fair, episode 30 is the longest planned episode because episode 30 was the original mm -hmm. fan oh. fiction concept. <clears throat> and like, <gasps> then it turned into Dila, and then I was like, you know what? No conflict. And so domestic life, right? And then I'm like, wait, I have to have a conflict. So I just kept the same conflict. It, that, that's mm. episode oh, 30. Wow. Like, episode 30 was the original concept for Dila. With minus I Quill. You were like, hang on a second, and wrote three whole seasons. Yeah. I, no, Quill wasn't I, I there. Remember. Martin and Liv weren't there. It was literally just, <gasps> like, the three of them, the Horsemen of the Apocalypse, and, like, Eris. Wow. Yeah. I, I remember when, I think when you gave that to me, um... I was at the movie theaters for my birthday, and you uh -huh. were like, hey, here's the episode. It's a bit oh. longer than usual, yeah. but <laughs> I think that you'll be perfectly fine. And I normally get them done in, like, I normally get, like, the episodes done in, like, I like a day. Like, Yeah, you're very quick at it. It usually takes me longer than that because I either forget that they're there or mm -hmm. I just am not in, like, peak physical conditions. Yeah. So... I, <laughs> it took me like three days to do it because it was like three times as long as normal episodes are. And then it, I was, I also got my first shot of um, the COVID yeah. vaccine. So I was Ooh. like, no, uh, see, okay. I'll I try. I feel like it's, it's very important to say, you say three days, like it's like this long amount of time while getting your second jab and it being your birthday and not being in your peak physical state and you did it in three <laughs> days like i'm well i normally take like an hour or two okay but it's been you getting do. closer to like one day or and then like it took like three days for that but i, I felt bad dude i literally like i give you a week so you can take the week <laughs> <laughs> I know that you can do it in a short amount of time, and I absolutely love it. But the fact that, like, don't berate yourself for doing it in three days. That is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I just, wow, River, you're, you're just great. I, I appreciate you so much. Thank this you. This is a River Appreciation River post. River Appreciation post. Thank All you. of you Appreciation post. You guys are so Everyone good. Everyone Appreciation post. Yes. Cast and crew appreciation post. Um, while Sentry. we're appreciation posting, uh, Lindsay says, all of the stories fit the characters perfectly. Great job to everyone. And um, Crisis says, well done on another incredible season. Uh, and Aww. let's see. There's a very long comment from Jem that I will read towards the end. I love it, though. Um, cool. Let's do... I'm going to have to edit this episode. <laughs> Shout out to Leo, by the way. Leo Zahn from Francis Forever Podcast for editing part of episode 30 for me. I very much appreciate it, and I need to just shout that out more. If you haven't listened to Francis Forever, love Leo. Though, go listen yes, to Francis oh, Francis Forever. Forever is so good. I love it. I love it yeah. so much. I'm a script editor for that just as well. Are you really? Go listen to that. Yep, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm saying, pod the, the DLAC community is very, very small, and it's extending, and I love it. So I love it so much. Yeah. Talented, yes. though. Like, yeah. Francis Forever is very good. Go listen to it. Everyone here. God, oh my God, yeah, you guys. you guys. And also, all of you listening. God, I love you so much. Yeah. Thank you. We love you, listeners. Appreciation post in our this, this podcast used to freaking be like... Cursed American James sending it to Sammy over email. <laughs> sending audio to Sammy over At email. At some point. <laughs> With a free music archive. You need to song. release the, the forbidden. I'm not. I will never. 
I will you never. You have to. I will not do Please it. Please do. You, like, hired... You hired a script editor because they were like, Hey, I can script edit if you would like you on did, Snapchat. Yeah. I was on Snapchat and I was like, Ugh, podcasts. And you were like, Hey, do you need a script editor? I'm like, absolutely I need a script editor. Thank you. I did not expect it. And then, it like, so that's what got me into podcasting. Like, I'm... Oh, <laughs> wow. I'm so glad that you, like contacted me about it out of the blue river and i have only met one time yeah. like in person <laughs> and since then i think the script editing thing was like the next time that you texted me after we met each other like yeah. i believe that I it think was so. very very quick but we just kind of clicked like we've just been friends <laughs> um okay cool what have we not done god um oh uh, who slash what is inspiring you right now? Voice acting, writing, etc. This can be off topic. Like, this is probably a bad question to do, but yeah, this can be off topic. This is okay. What are you What are you inspired by right now? Oh boy. Um. Imagine being inspired or motivated <laughs> to do things. Um. Uh, let me think. Um. I don't really have. Cause with editing. I mean, for me personally, it's more of like, um, I guess like more like grammatical kind of stuff, mm -hmm. but I guess like voice acting in general, I kind of just like, I guess like the idea of having a deep voice is mm -hmm. kind of what's uh, <laughs> motivating so like me to keep yeah. on working on my voice. <clears throat> gender is the yes. best motivation. Passing. Besides, like, spite, gender is What inspires me motivating. to do what? This is a really yeah, vague question. I mean, question. just anything creative that you're doing. Like, just kind of... Voice actors that I, like, I like or I'm a fan of, like, mm -hmm. Eager Raptor or um, Lindsay and Michael Jones, mm -hmm. ironically. Um, I guess, like, just, like, I don't know. I don't really have, like, people that inspire me. Yeah, and that's valid. I like, it's, I like your weird. concepts. No, I like, like, the voice actors and, like, the concept of, like, gender and, like, that sort of thing. That's so cool that yeah. that inspires you. It, that's, like, a constant source of inspiration. That's cool. I, I guess I just kind of want to, like, be able to convey the entire spectrum, but, mm -hmm. yeah. No, I love it. And you do. Like, your voice is so cool, and I wish I had it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, so this is like, obviously, if you know me, then you know I have depression. <laughs> so, <Good to> know. <laughs> what a great way to start. start. Yeah. We can, we can handshake. So, if you know me, you know I have depression. So, it's sort of like less what motivates me to be creative and more what motivates me to just kind of like, like get out of bed. Mm -hmm. Um, cause it's like, I feel like, like, once you're like motivated to like get out of bed and get dressed, taking on the day is a lot easier mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. um so like as, as as like weird as it is um minecraft yeah yeah heck yeah <laughs> understandable I'm so here for um that. my minecraft world um my minecraft world and i'm like that the world that i'm playing in right now that's so good which is named survival 2 <laughs> <laughs> what a good name I, mean, I love but that like that is I don't know why but it's just like Minecraft for Minecraft. some reason has just always been a really big motivation to me to like not die oh absolutely <laughs> yeah valid like Minecraft I genuinely is so important to our generation specifically like yeah it is it's insane it is both in like the way that people play it and mm -hmm. both the and also the way that there's been content creators because of it and like yeah. who we looked up look up to mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. who we become and how we act like because of those creators oh absolutely i mean the reason that i do a british accent all the time is because of stampy long nose in yeah. fourth <laughs> grade like i never watched stampy yeah. i feel like i missed out i did well, you see, I, I used to have a really annoying British accent, but you can blame Stampy <laughs> for that. But, um, yeah, no, genuinely, like, that's what made me have a British accent. So, and, I mean, Minecraft, like, I considered becoming an architect just because I really, really love using Minecraft to, like, build cool architecture. Mm -hmm. But then I learned that real-life architecture is mathematics, and I hate math. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> genuinely, Minecraft is a great, great motivator. I love it. Sammy? It's very Sam, valid. Oh. My, my dear cousin. 
<laughs> I guess for me, okay, this is going to come as a huge shock. It's going to blow your <laughs> socks off. But I am a huge nerd. And what? So, <laughs> Why didn't you tell me? I know, right? <laughs> I would have never I, guessed. Look, I've been trying to get up the courage to say it for, for a while now. Are you coming out as a nerd? now was the right time. Anyway, <laughs> so I just like, when I have long-term interests, it tends to manifest in me doing like a story with them. Yeah. Like the stories I have right now, I have one that's based on like a couple different figures from Greek myth. Mm -hmm. I have one that's based on um, like angelology and sort of uh, the Judeo-Christian mythology. And I don't think you can really use mythology to describe that, but <laughs> you know what I mean. I think you can. Um, I, have, I think you can. Yeah, you, you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can, but like, because I, I mean, know, just Greek mythology, mythology, mythology was religion, and Roman mythology was sure. Religion. It, like, I don't know so, if mythology applies to still living like widely practiced religions. I actually sure. don't know. Anyway, anyway, anyway. regardless, <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, and I have like I have one that's based on like uh, quantum physics mm -hmm. and Everett's many worlds theory, that's just because so cool. like I find it really interesting and I want to explore these concepts. Um, and so those are often just whatever I'm interested in academically will mm -hmm. often have some sort of creative spinoff for me. And then also, and God, nobody's going to know who this is, no, know who I'm talking about, except for like Mike and I guess Anna, if she's listening to this, <laughs> but um, in the spring I did a play for school and it was written by one of the seniors at school and that senior who I'd, I'd known, sh we did, we did, um, a production of 12 Angry Men together mm -hmm. in the, um, fall, and she really is just, like, an incredible person and does so much stuff, um, uh -huh. and, like, I fully just, like, seeing her do all of that is a big motivator for me, <laughs> and then also, I mean, it, I think it it's kind of a given, but like domestic life is yeah really domestic just domestic and I think a lot of people have talked about this, but um, like a lot a of people lot of who people? have created podcasts because of domestic life and because that happened yeah mm -hmm. but like but it is just it is so nice to see that you can just do <laughs> stuff like yeah. there's not anything stopping you yeah like you can literally just write a podcast you're allowed. It's and okay. you can make mistakes, and it doesn't have to be perfect, and you can hate it sometimes, but, you know? I do. I hate some episodes of Domestic Life. I want them to burn. I would burn them, willingly. But also, like, overall, yeah. I would stop you. But <laughs> you would. I know what you mean. Yeah, but, like, I don't know. It's just, I feel like so many people have, um, or maybe this is just me and I'm projecting, but, like, have these weird inhibitions where it's like, oh, I'm not, you know at the right time in my mm -hmm. life, or I'm too busy, or I don't have the right equipment, or I'm just not, like, talented enough, and, like, just do it. Yeah. Like, who cares? Just, just make a thing. The only way you're gonna get better at making things is by making things. Absolutely, yeah. 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 And right. I actually, um, going on, I, uh, that's my inspiration, <laughs> is essentially, like, the, the thought of people taking inspiration from my work like that's always been my inspiration for art is like the reason I get better is that so people can be better than me and like Neighborly is incredible I don't if you mm -hmm. haven't listened to Neighborly go listen to Neighborly Neighborly is so good way better than domestic life and that's like the point and I'm so happy about it like I am genuinely so glad that something like that came out of domestic life that is just amazing to me mm -hmm. and like yeah that was that was one of the original points of domestic life and it's going to be one of the points of the entire Iden universe like all of the projects that I'm planning in the future that I have written and planned and all that sort of thing um all of that is like yeah to hopefully inspire people to make stuff like neighborly and like Francis and like the Radiance and Good Ship Tempest and those sort of podcasts that have come out of the <laughs> domestic life. Um, mm -hmm. Just, yeah, like show people that they can make podcasts. And also, um, it's my main motivator. I'm thinking about making a podcast where I just teach you how to make a podcast on a low budget. That'd like just so cool. <laughs> with your little, yes, your little phone do. and your little duvet and, you know, what kind of audio editing stuff and that sort of thing. I think that'd be 
fun and I think it'd be really cool because like a lot of people are wondering how to do it and don't know where to find resources for that and yeah so I yeah yeah it's a, it's a really good motivator I know I already talked about what motivates me but another thing is like this is what motivates me I guess to like stay like creative in mm-hmm. a certain sense is like um, I already mentioned that I'm, like, hyper-fixated on it, but, like, Critical Role, because, like, like, obviously, when you're, like, hyper-fixated on something, for me at least, I always just want to, like, make more of it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's, like, it inspires me to, like, keep, like, practicing, like, ukulele mm-hmm. and guitar so that I can, like, play, like, the fan songs and stuff, because mm-hmm. I'm not talented enough for a song. <laughs> That's um, not true. Me, I've tried. That is not true. I've tried. I mean, t- writing songs <laughs> takes so much a long time to get good at, though, for some people. At least for yeah. me, like, it has. It's, so. yeah. Mm-hmm. I find it discouraging because I'm very no, bad at it. <laughs> but, okay. um, you know. Also, something that I find weirdly inspiring um, sometimes is I this, like, quote that I found. Maybe not a quote, but it was basically this person who was like, it's okay to quit. Yeah. Like, if you don't like something that you're doing, you can just stop doing it. And, like, I don't know, I find that, I find that really, like, helpful, because sometimes you start doing something, and you're like, oh, but I've already spent, like, X, Y, Z amount of time on it. Yes. I need to, like, see it through. So it's, like, you don't always need to. Obviously, there's some things where that is the case, but it's, like, it's, well, there's, like, some things where that's the Mm -hmm. case, where it's, like, if you're, like, trying to, like, recover from something, or, like, your mental health, then it's, like, Mm -hmm. yeah, that's gonna take a lot of time and energy, obviously. I, it's gonna, um, but it's, like, there's things, like, 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 creative projects and, like, hobbies, if you start something and you don't like it, you can just stop doing it. Which, like, I'm saying that, like, I know how it feels to do that. I do now, but I have a very hard time doing that. Um, I do want to say that I don't, like, like, I do agree that, like, you can, like, quit, like, whenever you want. I do think that it's probably the best idea that if you're like really passionate and you kind of have to convince yourself to not continue to yeah to not continue doing it that there's there is such thing as just like taking a break from it for like a month or two Mm -hmm. and then like coming back with a fresh brain you can also like take breaks from things for a while well and and i've been i've been sitting on my novel for the past year and i haven't written anything for it and genuinely i have so many more scene ideas and better ideas for how to do it and i haven't touched it since yeah. last like August. sometimes the best thing for a creative project is to just like take yeah a break absolutely from it. but like i was working on a pit crew and i didn't like <laughs> it i didn't like how difficult i found it and i didn't like how it was mm-hmm. coming along i just yeah. stopped i have all the files sitting somewhere on my computer i did the same thing with the texture pack for minecraft i found it annoying and i had other things that took way more precedence so i just stopped and I did that with a podcast. I started writing it, and then I was like, I'm way too busy for this, and I just stopped. And it's really just, like, amazing to know that, like, I don't... Just because I started something doesn't mean I need to finish it. It's, it's a, yeah, it's kind yeah. of freeing. Right. And there's so much... There is so much stigma around, like, not finishing projects in the creative community. And genuinely, like... If it's not working, you don't have to. I definitely keep your drafts and things in case you want to elaborate on it later or you get a better yeah. idea for it. No, I keep all but my drafts. Like, you don't but have to. But it's like, to. just because you have the draft doesn't mean it needs to be finished. Absolutely. And, like, all of my drafts from stories in, like, middle school are unfinished and messy and gross and I hate them. Guess what I'm elaborating on? five years later like this is part of the domestic life universe now and i have so many better ideas for them so like even if you get rid of a project it doesn't mean it's gone forever and if that comforts you like that's great and you may never pick it up again and that's fine too because like creatives always are coming up with new things like i have so many stories that i'm never going to elaborate on and i genuinely i haven't officially put any of them down but i have like put a lot of them down I've p- officially put one project down, like, consciously, um, yeah. without just, like, getting unmotivated. I was writing a play, and I put it down, because it just didn't work. It just wasn't working. And that's the first time I can remember consciously doing that, instead of letting it just drift off um, when I get unmotivated to do it. And it honestly feels better to just put it down, say, no, I'm not going to do it, 
put it in a Google Drive somewhere and then just forget it's there. And like you like, also yeah. like yeah. know that it's like you know like when it's happening that like you like yes you you know that realization like it's it's yeah. really hard to describe it like it's it's like the worst thing that you can say to someone who's like uncertain about yeah. stuff but it really no, is just like you'll it, yeah. feel it mm-hmm. and and you realize it I think when I realized it it was things kept going wrong and I couldn't see the end of it or the middle of it and I just had this concept and it was all right but it wasn't really working and I was trying to make it work in different ways and it just wasn't and then I realized that the thing that I was trying to do a metaphor for could actually be taken very literally and was on a subject that I'm not educated in and just a lot of those things together just that's the recipe for a project that I just needed to put down and you know yeah. use the skills that i learned and what i learned from making what little of it that i did yeah and just do something different or like if you realize that you're if you realize you're doing a project that you don't have the time for or that you're not skilled enough to write or that you're not educated enough to like work on then you can like take a break and step away and work on Absolutely. other projects to improve your skill level and educate yourself bef- and then come back yes. to that one later and Honestly, like, that's what domestic life is, is this is an intermittent project that's supposed to serve the purpose of being finished. And so I can say I've finished a project and I've put myself out there, but I have learned so much. It's like when you put something on your to-do list yeah, just across right. the Yeah, right. Genuinely, domestic life, <laughs> it has nearly served its purpose. After season four, it will have served all of its purposes and I can put it down. And all of the stories beyond this are going to be so much better. But like knowing that domestic life isn't as perfect as I wanted it to be and isn't all that it could have been, it's still out there and it's still, you know, it's my work. And Sammy's told me this before, but like if I were to stop doing domestic life, people would be sad, but ultimately the world would keep spinning. And so if domestic life genuinely I mean, got people to are the sad point, whenever any yes, project any ends. project, but like the amount of work that I've put in domestic life over the past two years, that's a lot of work, but I still could put it down. I still am able to say this yeah. is too stressful. This is not what I want to be doing. And ultimately mm-hmm. the question is, does it give you joy at the end of the day? And domestic life does absolutely 100 percent. like this is worth it to me and if it wasn't i i would have probably made the decision to put it down or just left it a while ago and let it disappear um but it it has served a lot of its purposes and it's genuinely fun to talk about and i get to do stuff like this so like it's worth it mm-hmm. yeah yeah so we had two more questions, um, which I didn't actually get around to answering in the Q&A, so this is recorded afterwards. Um, but I've gotten two more questions, one from question mark, I don't know uh, who has asked these, um, and then also crisis. Uh, and thank you very much for whoever asked the question. I'm sorry uh, it didn't fill in your name, um, but if you asked it, thank you. So. First person has two questions. Uh, the first one is what scene or episode was the hardest to write? And the second one is what scene or episode was the hardest to edit? Um, I think the, the scene that was hardest to write for me was um, the final scene in episode 30. It was also one of the easiest, but um, in a lot of ways it was the hardest because of how much pressure I had, I think, to make it how I was picturing it in my head. I had this idea of it from the very beginning of when I started the podcast, uh, as I believe I mentioned before earlier in in the episode. Um, But I I remember sitting down to write it like three different times and every single time I just like was like, no, I can't do it. Like, it's just, it's not going to be exactly how I'm picturing it, and I'm not going to be able to, like, convey what I want to convey in it. Um, and then after, like, a while, I was finally able to sit down and write it, and then, you know, it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to, so I went back and edited it. It was just a whole process. Um, so I think the, the process of, like, writing this thing that has been in my head for so long, and then seeing it turn out a bit differently than I'd expected 
was something that I had to come to terms with and it made it really difficult to write. Um, as for what was the hardest to edit, um, I gotta say episode 30 also. Um, I think probably the sword fighting scene because I had to like fill the silence. I had to make it sound kind of realistic sword fighting um, through an audio medium. And I actually listened to uh, the audio drama of uh, Mark of Zorro and listening to the sword fighting, it starts off with sword fighting. Um, and I was also listening, I had just watched the movie version of it. And so I rewatched um, the sword fight between Diego and Esteban um, without visuals. Like I just kind of listened to it and uh, to just kind of get sword fighting in my head. Um, and I, I still don't think that I conveyed it as well as I could have, um, but I'm also new to soundscaping. So it was kind of, yeah. Um, I also think that, that just episode 30 in general was really hard to edit because there's a lot of voices all at once and I had to break it up scene by scene. And I actually broke up scenes because they kind of all run into each other. Um, there's very few recorder clicks uh, compared to how, like, I think I split it up into nine sections and I only think there's four, like, or five maybe recorder click sections, um, which I usually split it up by that. But uh, yeah, this one I split up like in the middle of some of them. Um, yeah, that was whack. So yeah, soundscaping and vocals. Episode thirty was just yeah, that was a that was a whole episode. Um, so whoever asked those questions, thank you so much. Uh, I I love talking about like editing and, and writing and everything. Um, and speaking of writing for seasons, the next question is, how do you write for seasons? Uh, did you do most of the writing slash storyboarding in season one? Um, or do you do it season by season? Do you write episodes at the beginning of each season or episode by episode? Um, so this is a lot of questions. I'm going to break this down question by question. Um, so I think, do, did you do most of the writing slash storyboarding in season one, or did you do it season by season? Um, I think the answer to this question is that I had the whole story planned from the beginning. Um, I had the ending in mind when I was writing season one. Uh, I already knew kind of where I wanted to go and how many seasons I wanted to do. Um, I did write the show season by season. Like, I didn't write all of season one through season four, which I wish I had, but um, I didn't I didn't do it all in one go. I did write it season by season, and then I started writing it, uh, I started writing the next season after I released, like, the first season. So, which isn't, looking back on it, I probably would not write a podcast that way again. Um, but it, yeah, I, I had the ending in mind, and I actually, it went through a few iterations, as I wrote seasons one and two, and as I started releasing season one, I got a lot of feedback that really helped solidify the idea. Um, there is a comment that Alex Newell made about Magnus Archives, though, that was like, they had an ending in mind, but it changed a lot by the end, and so they kind of kept it flexible. And I think that's that's what I did for Dila as well, where I had an ending in mind, um, but it's it's gone through several iterations during the process of writing the podcast and making it and also based on the response to season one i kind of knew where i wanted to go uh after you know writing season two and so on um once i was done with season two i had season three and four completely planned out um i think once i was done with season two i i had the end of the podcast pretty much solidified um and all that was left to do was write it um, which sounds like it was easy from there. It, it wasn't. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, the the second part of the question is, do you write the episodes at the beginning of each season or episode by episode? Um, I don't know what the difference is. I, I write, I mean, I guess I write episode by, like, I write an episode, and then I write the next step, <laughs> like, I write the episodes in order. Um, I don't usually try, like, skip around or anything. Um, 
I, I noticed that writing slash storyboarding was mentioned. Um, I did actually do a lot of visual story, not storyboarding, uh, which I could have done. And, you know, I think if I made another podcast um, by myself, I think I would probably board it. Um, but I did a lot of visual, like, I made a blueprint of the manor, and I made a blueprint of the town. I actually, the map in Quill's notebook, uh, actually exists in my binder. Um, I have a DLAP binder, which, um, just has all of my plans in it, and all of, like, doodles of characters, and, like, uh, scene layouts, and I have, I have the library laid out, um, I have a list of all of the like different types of organization patterns that the library has um a lot of the writing uh came after a lot of just planning and drawing circles and writing like things around them because i use story circle structure to outline episodes and things so i i guess i'll go into my process a little bit um with the seasons every time i started a new season I, I had season outlines already done, um, kind of up until midway through season three. Um, I knew how I wanted to end it, but I didn't know how I wanted to build up to the end of season three when I had just started. Um, but I had, I had seasons one and two completely outlined. Um, and then when I started doing episodes, I would go episode by episode and outline everything that happened in them. Um, so, like, the story circle for episode one of d would look like uh, Quill Taylor is in Morgrove. Uh, they want to write a book. Um, their unfamiliar situation is that they lost their phone. So they go around town and, you know, have a nice day without it and don't really worry about it. Um, do they get what they want? No. Uh, and their cost is, is that they're now in this, this, you know, weird town without really knowing what's going on. Uh, and they return to their familiar situation having changed, blah, blah, blah. And that's how I would start each, each planning stage. Then that can be applied to pretty much every episode of DLAT. Uh, so that, that's my writing process. And I, I would pretty much just outline all of the episodes in the season first, and then, once I sat down to write, I already had an outline ready and started writing it. So yeah, there's, there's that. Um, those are the last two questions that I had to answer. Um, I did have a long comment from Jem. Um, I'm going to read that for you real quick. Uh, Jem says, My only headcanon about DLAC characters podcasting is that Martin seems like he'd make a podcast where he just talks about whatever comes to mind, and there'd always be a generous amount of snark and sass. Um, which, Jem, I thank you for this headcanon. I love it. I think it's so much fun, and I think it'd be really, really funny if uh, Martin made a podcast where he just kind of would just ramble about things that he enjoyed. I think Liv would definitely love to guest star on it and, you know, talk about, like, they'd talk about books and nerdy stuff, and I really like this. So thank you for this comment. Thank you, everyone who asked questions. Uh, so Jem, Lindsay, Crisis, uh, Nick, and I believe Icon. Um, I don't know if, I think one of them is Icons, but I'm not sure. Uh, shout out to Icon, though. You're so cool, um, and we love you a lot. Uh, and while I'm shouting people out, thank you to everyone in the DLAT server for your constant support. Um, I had a really good time making this Q&A. Uh, we had a great time talking and, and discussing these sorts of things, and uh, yeah, it was just a lot of fun. Um, I can't wait for a fourth season, and uh, I'll see you guys very, very, very soon. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna end this season season three Q and A. Um, be Ooh. sure to you know check out all the people on here as well as the people on Domestic Life. Uh, everyone's on the website. Their links are all on the website. Um, and if you haven't listened to Domestic Life, so sorry to spoil it for you. Yeah, <laughs> why are you here? here? <laughs> Go listen to it. Um, <laughs> my other projects are Neighborly and Station Arcadia. You should listen to those. Um, go listen to Francis, because Francis Forever Pod is very good and is edited by Ripper and is, is Leo's on. Woohoo! 
Um, Preemptive plug, when I start my podcasts and when I have uh, Twitter accounts for them, go yes. follow those. They don't exist <laughs> Just right keep now, an eye out for but... Sammy on the internet every single day. <laughs> hold hold yes. this in your mind. I want to occupy at least some space your in your mind. Keep your ears very peeled. That's my very plug. Very peeled, very open. Leave, leave, leave some space yes. in your brain for me. <laughs> As you should. No reason, I just like attention. <laughs> Don't we all? That's why we're actors. <laughs> Uh, Look, you didn't have to say it out I loud. I didn't. I could still edit it out, but I might not. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Anyway, <laughs> goodbye, everyone. Thank you for listening to us rambling about domestic life. Bye. We love goodbye. you. Bye. I love you. <laughs> Take care of yourself. You deserve it. Bye. <laughs>